today I have a very weird player to show you, a Korean master player who builds mana on Nar. No, Nar doesn't use mana, so why is this guy buying it? It's not like he's an iron player who hasn't read the items. He's a master player on one of the best servers, buying these items on purpose. He is playing AP Nar. Oh, and if it wasn't strange enough that he's building mana and playing AP, he's also playing mid lane, with the account name Mid Mega Nar. A role that for Nar is so unheard of, the stats website give it a 0.0% pick rate. Everything about this idea sounds troll, but it actually has much higher damage, some new surprisingly useful tools, and it fixes a lot of Nar's usual problems. Let me show you why. But first, let me quickly tell you about this video's sponsor, Keeps. If, like me, you keep getting these troll smite Janna top players in your ranked games inting you, I have no idea where they all came from by the way, then solo you can feel like it's aging you faster than the average human. So it might be a good time to sign up for Keeps, a subscription service that aims to help treat male pattern baldness. This is a condition that two out of every three men will experience some sort of by the age of 35. Once you are bald, it's too late to start this kind of treatment, so it's important to start while you still have hair. When you join, your information gets reviewed by a licensed doctor, who can recommend the right plan for you. With medication that's shipped right to your door. Think of all the extra LP you can get not having to leave your house and go to the pharmacy and pick it up. The medications that Keeps offers are approved by the FDA and can also save you money because they're often cheaper than the name brand version. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com forward slash happy chime noises and receive 50% off your first order. Link is also in the description. So why is this guy playing AP Nar? The main reason is Nar's W. This ability lets him apply three snacks to an enemy, one per auto attack, and when he hits the third, the stacks are used up to deal bonus magic damage that deals a percentage of the enemy's max health. Usually this is irrelevant on normal Nar because it scales with AP and he doesn't buy any, but with a full AP build, this ability with its 100% AP scaling means that with his autos he can start to deal upwards of 400 damage as well as 14% of the enemy's max health in just one auto attack. With attack speed in his build, this alone is enough to kill squishies or even tanks in just a few seconds. But that's not his only ability with AP scaling. Nar's ultimate also has 100% AP scaling, with an already high base damage combined with just a few AP items. This ability will deal over a thousand damage to any enemy it hits and stun them, practically winning the fight immediately. But why is this Nar playing mid lane? To understand this I did my usual research and talked to multiple challenger top lane players about why Nar is not a great top laner. In top lane, and remember this info is directly from challengers with expert knowledge, Nar gets very quickly outscaled by most meta top laners. Irelia, Camille, Jax, Akshan, just to name a few, all of these can win lane against him and also destroy him later on. Another huge reason why Nartop is unpopular in high elo is his reliance on timing his Mega Nar perfectly for fights. And even if he times it well, his solo queue teammates are not reliable enough to fight when it's up. So by playing mid lane, his early game is much easier than top lane, getting to lane against weak mages as a ranged AD carry. He will always be out damaging them early on as they need items to start fighting, and Nar is not at risk of getting denied any CS because he can always last hit easily. Also in mid lane his jump is even better than top, the lane is so short that just one jump on a minion or an enemy will get him back to tower, meaning he's safe, whereas top lane this ability doesn't get him far enough. And the big problem of Nar requiring ultimate for fights, on AP he actually doesn't need it, and you'll see why later. But these are just the start, AP Nar has even more benefits that I need to show you in game, from early fights all the way to destroying enemies in 1v1s. In early lane, AP Nar is simple, at this point he has Doran's Blade and takes his boomerang, these let him dominate any early fight with just auto attacks and the Q slow. He can poke enemies, push wave, and control the lane however he wants. That's the main benefit of having early AD, but I promise the AP is coming. He bases early on to buy Kindle Gem, an ideal component for Nar as he relies fully on cooldown reduction to cast more abilities. Nar gets level 6, a huge power spike whichever lane he is in, but it's even stronger in mid lane against squishy immobile carries. Using the four corner walls he can jump in and CC enemies, shoving them against these tiny walls for extra damage and bursting them down with auto attacks. His base damage is already really high since this champion is mostly built as a tanky bruiser, and mid lane Nar can use this really well. He can engage whenever he wants and use ult, the cooldown doesn't matter as it will be back up the next time he has mega. In top lane after the TP nerfs, Nar doesn't really get to use this early ultimate power, but in mid lane he can roam and join any fight, even bot lane, to use this early power, and instead of TP he can even take ignite to get kills in lane. His first item is always berserker greaves, still no AP, but these prepare the champion for AP, because faster auto attacks means he's going to get more W stacks, and more stacks mean a ton of extra damage. With just these early boots he can chase kills down, if enemies walk up too far they die, using his E bounce on minions to set it up, which also gives him attack speed by the way. Having attack speed on Nar basically directly converts to movement speed, because if he has attack speed he can proc W over and over again to chase enemies down. Finally he picks up
up some AP, a lost chapter. By itself, it's pretty much useless, except for the fact it builds into Everfrost. This gives Nar a new, unexpected CC, as well as a huge amount of AP and even more ability haste. Much like everyone who is watching this video, people in his games do not expect this item at all. He walks back to lane, playing normally, and suddenly a random ranged CC comes out of a champion that should not be able to buy it. It is impossible to predict, because the only way enemies could know is if they were constantly checking his inventory. This item is really good because it sets up so many 1v1s and picks that Nar could otherwise not get, even helping him engage fights and set up his full combo. Usually Nar struggles to reach enemies with his ult and CC, but with Everfrost he can get a ranged engage that lets him transform into Mega, jump in and hit a free ult, setting up his auto attack damage. Everfrost CC also lasts longer than Nar's ultimate's knockback, so he can CC enemies to set up the ult, press ult to push enemies towards his team's damage, and the enemies remain CC'd in front of them, which sets up a fight perfectly. He doesn't even need a wall anymore to get a useful engage. At this point, Nar starts to move into a side lane, even buying a Rage Knife just for more attack speed so he can proc his W stacks even more often. 800 gold for 25% more attack speed, and it only takes up one slot, so it's pretty valuable for AP Nar. Using his W stack damage, he now wants to look for 1v1 kills in the side lane, chasing enemies down with the speed boost, transforming and using ult if needed to finish off the kill. But his W damage is so crazy high, he barely even needs it. He even takes Ghost in some games to help him reach enemies easier in side lane as well as in team fights. Team fights are usually Nar's hardest point of the game. By now, he's falling off. He's building full tank items and relying only on his ultimate to really carry the fight. On the other hand, AP Nar just picked up Nash's Tooth and is beginning to power spike. Usually for team fights, he wants to charge up Mega Nar and join the fight just as it activates to land a huge ult, which his team can follow up on. The best thing about AP Nar is that it doesn't really matter which form he is in at the start of the fight. If he's in Mega, that's great. He can still land a high damage AP ultimate to CC and kill enemies. If he's in mini form, it's still great. He can act as a backline DPS champion, popping his W on the enemy frontline to shred through their health with the repeated max HP damage. This damage is absolutely stupid. Nar just needs a single W proc to take away the majority of a bruiser's health bar. It's the same style as a Vayne, who deals max HP damage converted to true damage. Nar instead converts his to magic damage, so it's not quite as OP, but it's still really useful. His auto attacks in mega form are slightly weaker as he doesn't have the W stacks, but with his Q damage, W stun, and Nash's tooth, he can still finish off kills himself, not having to rely on his teammates for damage. In fights, Everfrost can completely change the game. Nar can finally set up a huge engage without having to risk enemies flashing away from it. High elo players will always flash away from a normal Nar ultimate engage, if they have the tools to do so, but with Everfrost randomly coming out of nowhere, it's unexpected even in Korean Master, giving him a free setup for his ult. But it's not just good for an engage, it also gives him a ridiculous CC chain. In this game, the enemies have one way to win, a fed Akali with an insanely good flank. But even though she's fed and in a great position, Nar completely denies her, ever frosting for 1.5 seconds of CC into another 1.5 seconds of ultimate CC into one and a quarter seconds of WCC, letting his AD carry DPS her the whole time and take her down to win the fight. Some would say that four and a quarter seconds of CC is too long, and I would agree, that sounds awful to play against. It's a very similar length to Morgana, but Nar actually has the auto attack damage to go with it and finish off the kill himself. In late game, Nar is actually outscaling split pushers. Look at this fight against a late game Irelia with Nar on low health. There is no chance the meta Nar build could win this 1v1. He doesn't even have enough damage to kill her, but AP Nar gets a quick three auto attacks off to stack his W, removing 75% of Irelia's health bar instantly, then transforming and using just one Q to finish off the kill. This damage is ridiculous. So clearly this build is impressive, but there are a few problems before we give it a rating on our tier list. The gold he wastes by mana is a pretty big one. Here's the build that he likes the most, attack speed boots into Everfrost and Nash's Tooth, into Wit's End to give him even more attack speed, and the bonus magic damage on every auto attack, then often even buying Death's Dance to help him beat AD champions in a side lane. But this item literally got buffed this patch to also include magic damage, so it's probably incredibly broken in any 1v1. He has tested some other builds, and I would like to recommend his Cosmic Drive build. Cosmic Drive has great synergy with Nar as it also has a 3 hit passive, giving him loads of movement speed and AP to make him even more impactful in fights. He's tested Crown and Rocket Belt as well. Crown is great against high damage enemy teams, but all it really does is help him take less damage, and if he wanted to do that, he might as well just go tank. Rocket Belt is good as he doesn't have to build mana, and it can let him get his engage off easier. He takes lethal tempo every game so that he can have sustained DPS that can kill any target. I think this is a great choice. So overall, this pick is super interesting. It makes Nar much more useful in solo queue, no longer needing a team to follow up on his engages and win games. He's happy to win fights himself in a side lane or even 1v5 DPS in a team fight. The main downfall of this strategy 
strategy is how squishy he ends up being. Na is not an easy champion to master, since he's pretty much two different champions with different abilities, and also different amounts of health, damage, and resistances. There's lots of variables. Combining this with not having any magic resist or armor, Mini Na is very easy to one-shot, and Mega Na is not much better, being immobile and deceivingly not actually tanky. So because of this, my rating for this build in high elo is a 5 out of 10. Let me explain. Mid lane I think is a great adaptation. The damage build is also good for his impact on the game, but due to his low range, and Mega Na pretty much removing his best AP ability, he now just gets new problems to deal with, and in high elo these are just as bad. For diamond and below I would actually highly recommend this style. I think a full damage build like this is a great thing to one trick. It's got a high skill cap and you're rewarded if you master it. Also it can win games by surprising enemies with Everfrost and bursting people in just a few autos. You don't need to worry about being punished for being squishy if you're constantly killing people in 1v1s with no counterplay. They're not going to be able to dodge your really high damage auto attacks. Thanks again to Keeps for sponsoring this video, link is in the description. Thanks so much for watching.